Hardwell played at this festival called Saga and unfortunately the CDJ stopped working halfway through his set or the beginning of his set. Allegedly from what I've been able to read, the Q button was kind of fucked. So every time he's trying to press Q to Q the next song in, it wasn't working. Something was wrong with it. And he tried to get the technicians to help, they weren't helping. And it got to a point where you're super frustrated and you just kind of freaked out and had a big crash out on stage. That's really funny, but also very illuminating because it shows you the difference in tolerance levels for professional DJs and like amateurs like myself. Because the things that I've had to, the things I've had to put up playing in places, you will not believe the things that I've seen and had to put up with playing in certain places. So it's funny to see DJs of his level decide, you know what? The Cubine isn't working. I'm not fucking playing. Fuck this shit. <laughs> he throws the headphones, he's pissed, pissed. He stops playing, he's behind the booth now. He's talking to technicians, he's doing something. He's pissed, he comes back on the stage. He grabs a microphone. And now he's, now he's gonna rant. Now he's gonna rant, now he's gonna rant. Now he's gonna rant. Give me one fucking second, give me one fucking second. I'm here. I travel all the way from fucking Holland to perform for you guys. I'm here. I'm here. Hey, I'm here. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I, I love how he wants a pat on the back for doing his job. He wants a pat on the back and a star and a sticker and a hand job for traveling for his job, which is a part of his job, right? As a DJ, you travel the world playing music, especially on a professional level. That's your dream for the most part, cool. I love how he wants a pat on the back and a wank, right? And a handshake and a star and a lollipop for doing his job. Great, go on hard, we'll continue. Isn't that pretty crazy? Isn't it crazy that a DJ of Hardwell's level, again, I'm not the biggest EDM guy, but I know he's a pretty world famous EDM DJ and producer. Isn't it wild that he has to play for free? Maybe this is a standard thing when it comes to festivals. Maybe festivals do in general, because if you've read anything or you've seen interviews of people that run festivals, they always say that festivals are basically a, um, you know, a thing that you do for the love of the game. They're not usually a good money earner because of the amount of things that have to go into investing into it to make it happen in the first place. So maybe there is something to be said for a business model where you don't pay artists, but you provide a space for punters to come and enjoy. It creates a space for artists to come and promote themselves, but then you just cover their flights and their accommodation. That's pretty insane to think that at Hardwell's level, you still have to play these gigs to keep promoting yourself and get your name out there there doesn't come a point where you don't stop playing free gigs, which is interesting because it makes me believe that that statement I said before where I think DJ Heidi Lorden, big up Heidi, I'm a big fan of her. She was basically asking the question, why do, do Glastonbury people get paid? And allegedly from the comments I read, it depends in Glastonbury what type of level of DJ you are, but for the most part, they don't actually pay that well, which makes sense because it's one of the premier festivals. You're, you would be privileged to be invited to play and it will probably do more for you long term than a one-off fee can do, right? You know, it's not going to do much um, fee-wise, but in terms of long term, your fan base, increasing opportunities to get more gigs, that makes it more incredible. But it's pretty wild that Hardwell at his level is still playing free gigs. Maybe it kind of makes me think I should be changing the way that I think about getting booked and played in places and offering to play places more for free just for the love of the game and see how that works which is under which understandable why people are skeptical because usually whoever's offering to pay for free nine times out of ten they're not good you know that's the thing <laughs> if somebody hits you up wanting to play for free somewhere they're usually terrible so i guess if you're a promoter you have to kind of be wary that sometimes even if the person's not playing playing for money they might be more harm than good long Yeah, yeah, B big up Ezra. Um, festivals are a lost leader. They are just good for promotion, exactly. Um, 
Exactly, exactly. But yeah, yeah, he didn't get paid allegedly done the so that's what he said anyway. He, and I believe him. The way he's ranting and screaming, I'm I believe him. But he didn't mention anything about accommodation or travel. So most likely they do cover your travel or maybe you invoice them and they pay it back. But I'd imagine if a festival's got because it makes sense though. You you see dance music festivals and they have like a million DJs on there and they're usually all super big and well known because festivals don't like to book usually unco underground unknown talent because it's a festival and you want to guarantee people come and pay for tickets so you put all the big names on there so it makes sense that they don't pay because how could they afford it like, even like how it's impossible and this is a festival in fucking Saudi Arabia or Qatar or something maybe they could afford to pay it but regular festivals couldn't afford to pay all the you know the top 20 dj mag djs to play somewhere it won't it won't happen especially when all their fees are like 10 grand and upwards it doesn't make any sense I love how he's ranting and raving about the festival being shit and the tech being shit and they fucked up his, you know, his equipment. That's why he can't play. And they still haven't cut his mic off. They're so incompetent. The people that run this festival, clearly, they don't know how to set up DJ decks properly. They've got faulty equipment and they are unable to turn off his mic. <laughs> they don't have to turn off his mic. He's just ranting and raving. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> Listen, I'm here for you guys. Okay, I'm here for you guys. I want you to do something for me, guys. I want girls here over age to suck me off, guys. Right here, guys. All the girls over age, get on stage and suck me off, guys. Equipment, everything is letting me down. I can't perform. It's impossible for me to perform. The whole fucking DJ boot is shit. Fucking shit. I'm so sorry. I have to cancel the show so you guys know. Thank you guys for being here. Hey. She dropped the microphone, so he, he leaves. The funny thing is, this is almost standard for me. At my level, playing in bars and pubs, this is standard. I've had decks I've played with where literally one pitch slider doesn't work. I've had decks where I've played with, the Q button doesn't work, only to play. So when you're mixing, you have to just press pause and then press play. I've had ones where you only could use the hot cues. I've had one where the scroller doesn't work. This is just standard, like standard. You just have to figure out on the go and just kind of make it work. One where the mixes, the, the effects don't work and it's just have to mix it. Oh, sorry, the levels don't work. So you have to mix it using the crossfader. So it's, it's impressive to see the, the, the tolerance level professional DJs have. They just don't have any tolerance, which makes sense because at their level, you're playing so many gigs. You, don't, you can't afford to have headaches, interruptions that are gonna throw you off your process. It's just gonna take up too much time and energy and it doesn't matter, it's a waste because you're doing it for free anyway for promo. You got another gig tomorrow for 30 grand. It doesn't matter, fuck off. But at my level, I couldn't afford to do this. I wouldn't do it, I couldn't do it. You just have to make it make it happen and make it work. I remember one one time going to play somewhere where they said they had equipment, they didn't have equipment. So I basically had to play off my laptop. Luckily I brought it with me, but I had to literally plug my laptop into the mixer and just play it off there because the, the CDJs weren't working. <laughs> I had to download Virtual DJ while I was there and kind of like, and play with a fucking mouse and key and shit. Can you imagine? Like, <laughs> just figuring it out for fucking $50 and a couple of drink tokens. Madness, bro. But I love that hardware. I was like, you know what? This coupon doesn't work. I'm not going to sit here and wait and figure it out. Like, how I've done in the past where the coupon's not working. So you're on, you're frantically have your phone at the side of the DJ booth and you're Googling how to fix this error, going on the fucking Pioneer forums and trying to figure out what buttons to press to reset the thing and da 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 da. It's absolutely mad. But Hardwell was not impressed. He did not want to wait for them to figure it out. He stormed off and decided to go elsewhere. But funnily enough, look at what DJ Hype did. Um, what's his name? Is it James? No, DJ, DJ Hype. James Hype. I forgot his name. I keep mentioning his name. Um, is it James Hype? It is James Hype, right? Yeah, James Hype. James Hype, who I haven't heard of from in a long time, actually played after Hardwell the next day. And he decided to um, do a bit of a remix of Hardwell's infamous rant and breakdown and made it into a very cringy and corny track. But, you know, I'm guessing for the people there, it was quite funny to hear and see, but it's kind of corny and lame, which is kind of like, you know, James's, James Hype's um, most operandi, but it's a pretty impressive turnaround. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
So yeah, a bit, uh, you know, a little bit cool, a little bit cheesy, but a funny little edit there. Big up James Hype. I haven't heard from him in a while. I don't know what's happened to him. I feel like I saw him all the time during the pandemic, especially. He was everywhere. I think the pandemic might have, might have been a good time for James Hype. He was doing a lot of streams, a lot of production live streams and shit. And I remember he just stuck out to me because obviously the way he plays, his style, obviously the face that he pulls on behind the decks and shit. And the fact that he was one of the only people who I remember seeing as a DJ who'd wear in-ear monitors. He wouldn't wear over-the-ear headphones like I do and what regular DJs do. He'd wear those in-ear monitors. I thought it was wild to wear as a DJ um, when you're playing somewhere. But yeah, he'd have in-ear monitors and that's how he would mix instead of having uh, over-the-ear headphones and shit. But yeah, very fast turnaround and a good little remix there of Hardwell's Epic Rant, remix there by James Hype. And of course, this festival, was it called Sage or Saga? They actually put out a statement, um, kind of saying sorry, but kind of not. <laughs> this is Saga Festival statement on Hardwell's breakdown. Like, you gotta love it, bro. Allegedly as well, they're known to be a bit of a shitty festival um, who don't really do well or write by people and stuff, especially the artists. But Saga statement after Hardwell. Well, Hardwell, we're sorry that Rita Ora, Sidekick, Laureen and other DJs on five other stages got to play on the first day of Saga and you didn't. <laughs> so as you can see, Saga are not very apologetic. They're doubling down almost. The equipment traveled all the way from Netherlands just like you. The same set seems to be working perfectly well for Will Sparks right now. We've worked so hard to build this year's saga for our artists and ravers. We would have solved any technical issues effortlessly and fast if you would have let us know and not stopped your set so soon. We've done all we could to accommodate your request, including agreed payments. We're sorry your fans, our fans, they, they would have loved to finally watch you perform in Bucharest. Nothing but love and we wish you well. Yo, saga, I'm not giving a fuck. So I, I, I kind of feel them. Because there is a possibility that they could have sorted out the issue. Because if it's an issue with the with the with the Q button, it wouldn't been it wouldn't have been too hard for them to have quickly gone in the back, got another deck, and brought it out. They could have easily had him just play, hey, play your longest song possible on one deck. We'll quickly run back and get another one and plug it in. Or there might be a setting that you could do to reset the decks to get the Q button working again. Or just imp or just improvise and just use the play button. It's not ideal. You could use the play button or you could switch and use the Q button as a as a quasi Q. I guess if you're Hardwell at his level, you have to have some like lines in the sand. And maybe one line in the sand, one thing that's non-negotiable is equipment that works when I get there. I don't want to do any edits. I don't want to do any adjustments. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to go in Google. I want to go and plug and play. Maybe that's one of the hard lines in the sand and requirements that are non-negotiable with a professional DJ, which makes sense again because of the amount of gigs they play. They can't afford to just be like fiddling around doing shit like I would have to do because it's the one gig I have in a year. They have millions. You probably had four in the same night. So if it works, I'm playing. If not, I'm out. That might be a thing as well. But I love that Saga's doubling down and saying, you know, everyone else is okay. It's not, a, it's not a, it's a user error, basically. They're doing the Apple thing. User error. You're not using it right. <laughs> RIP Steve Jobs. But yeah, Saga Festival, not giving an absolute doobie about what he has to say. Not giving an absolute doobie about what he has to say. You love to see it. You absolutely love to see that level of just, you know, pure, unapologetic boobity boobity. 